Hi guys, my name is Nicholas Yeo and I am a core anesthetic trainee in the Glasgow Royal Infirmary. Welcome back to part 2 of my guide to the MSRA where we will be talking more about the clinical solving paper, question banks and also some of my top tips for the MSRA. Now if you missed out on my part 1 guide where we talked more about the professional dilemmas paper, I will post a link at the corner of the screen down below. If not, let's dive right into it. So the clinical sobbing paper lasts for 75 minutes with 86 questions and the scenarios are based around foundation level clinical practice. These are the 12 key domains that are being tested in the clinical sobbing paper. Now, my first advice to you is not to skip any of these topics as all of them could come out. Everyone, I mean everyone would have a weakness in some of these topics. Mine were pharmacology and therapeutics and also infectious diseases, immunology, genetics, which I perform poorly in. Do take note that the MSR examination is also tailored for candidates who want to do general practice. So try and focus your study time on the common topics rather than the weird and wonderful diseases as they are less likely to come out. So let's take a look at the first type of question, the extended matching questions. Now these questions gives you a pool of options to choose from for the next few questions. One example I can remember from the test is a topic of electrolyte imbalances where they'll give you options of things like hyperkalemia, hyponatremia, hypercalcemia and so on. And the questions will be simple such as, you know, a patient has an AKI and ECG shows tall tented T waves, the answer is hyperkalemia or patients being treated for a DK with IV fluids and develops new confusion and headache, the answer is hyponatremia. Now these questions are highly reliant on pattern recognition. There's a mix between one and two step answers and this simple question or this sample question is a perfect example of it. So let's go through the first question here. A 58 year old woman develops tremor and has repeated episodes of breathlessness associated with tachycardia. Now if you look here, 58 year old women, tremor and tachycardia. First thing in your mind should be hyperthyroidism. So that's that's where pattern recognition comes in. As an example of two step answers is the second question here. So 44 year old woman develops tingling after a total direct tyrectomy. First thing you want to know is a tyroidectomy can actually have a risk of taking away your parathyroid glands and parathyroid glands would lead to low calcium and low calcium leads to tingling in her fingers. So the answer will be F, hypoparathyroidism. Now the clinical solving paper in my opinion is really simple to study. All you have got to do is put in the effort in doing your question banks. It's really highly reliant on pattern recognition and the reason why I'm so confident in telling you this is because I completed the paper with more than 20 minutes left to spare as compared to the professional dilemmas paper which I only finished it with one minute left to spare and I perform better in the clinical solving paper as compared to the professional dilemmas paper. Right, so let's look at the second half of the paper which is the single best answers. The MSRA website states that half of the questions will be allocated to the extended matching questions and half assigned to the single best answers. So you, you will get a fair share of both type of questions. In this question type, you'll be given multiple plausible options and you've got to pick the best answer that suits the scenario. So if you look here, a 17 year old student suddenly develops chest pain, dips near, his trachea is deviated to the left, is hyperresonance. So immediately with pattern recognition, I can say that this is a pneumothorax. So these are my top tips for the clinical solving paper. Firstly, practice, practice and practice. Keep practicing your MCQ banks. I've done the MSRA early this January and I can tell you that the professional dilemmas paper is extremely mentally exhausting. That when the time comes to attempt your clinical solving paper, your brain will feel overloaded. It's like a computer which is running out of RAM. So the best way to do this is through pattern recognition where you've practiced so many questions that you know what to spot out for and your brain has to process less to get the answer that you need. Now, the reason why I say don't ask your friends on what came out was because I asked some of my friends what came out during their examinations. One advised me to study more on pediatric rashes, while another advised me to study more on obstetrics. But what I, when I attempted the MSRA, I went and prepared for these, but none of it came out. So unless my own friends are actually trolling me, the MSRA does 
rotate their questions on a day-to-day -day basis so that candidates won't be able to spot questions. So don't ask, as it did me no good. And lastly, don't leave out on any topics. Because from the feedback I've got from people who have attempted the MSRA, there are times where certain topics will come up more than others. So if you happen to have bad luck and that the topic which you didn't study very well came out a huge chunk, it would put you at a huge disadvantage. So play it safe and study it all. Now a lot of people would come to me and ask which question banks should I use. To be honest, I've had experience with the MCQ bank, eMedica and PassTest. If I had to choose one of these three, it will be the MCQ bank. This is because the questions are set similar to the exam and there are a lot of good notes in MCQ bank to help to deepen or fill in the gaps in your knowledge when attempting the MCQ questions. I also love the professional dilemmas portion of the MCQ bank as it goes deep into detail on why certain options rank higher than the others. I'm not sponsored by MCQ bank by the way so this is my honest opinion and I can't give much advice on the rest of the question banks because I didn't try them out. Now if you've ever wondered on how the MSRA is being scored, this is the August 2022 intake banding results. The scores will be standardized and placed into banding space on your score range with band 4 being the highest and band 1 being the lowest. Now if anyone wants to do anesthesia, the cutoff point was 532 during my year which means you have to score at least top 15% to get a chance in the interview. I would say it would be about the same for other competitive specialities but I don't have the numbers. Highlighted in red is what the scores which I achieve. On average, I achieve top 10%. Now I'm not boasting my scores or anything, I want to be transparent to you guys on my study methods, what I did and what I achieved. Many people are asking me how long did I study for the MSRA and how did I study for the MSRA. I've started early to mid November and average about 1 to 1.5 one hours of study time a day which means at least 60 hours of actual focus study time in total. I always keep a Microsoft Word document open to write in notes of things that I've learned to enhance space repetition on the questions or topics which I get wrong. Now in terms of question banks, I've completed MCQ Bank twice, eMedica once, I didn't do much of past tests as I felt it wasn't as good as MCQ Bank. Now my top advice I'm gonna give you today is firstly to start early, okay? A lot of people underestimate the amount of time that you need to study to go through these question banks and to get into the habit of consistently studying. Also, know your preferred study method, okay? I know of some people who are able to cram two weeks before the examination and get the same results as I am. If you're a crammer, good for you. My preferred method of study is slow and steady and that's why I took a longer period of just about two months over to prepare for the examination. Alright guys, that's all the knowledge I have to give. If you found this video helpful in any way, please leave a like or subscribe to my channel. If you have any other questions, feel free to reach me out on Instagram and I'll be happy to personally reply you. Now I'm also thinking of making a video on how to prepare for your interviews closer to the date. If you would like that, please leave a comment down below and I'll look into it. If not, all the best for your exams and hope you guys do well. I'll see you guys next time. Bye!